Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. I'm at The Bio Dude Houston. You can come visit my store Monday through Friday, 9 to 4, Saturday, 10 to 2. Be sure to check out my website, hit that like and subscribe button. And I have a very special guest with me today. Hi, I'm Chase with Houston Frogs. And I'm really excited to have Chase here because mm -hmm. Chase, like myself, has to have a lot of experience breeding poison dart frogs. You guys know I had a prior business called Genesis Exotics where I, you know, specialize in breeding dart frogs successfully. Um, and Chase, his business Houston Frogs, specializes in breeding dart frogs and providing great products to maintain them accurately. And today, uh, what we're going to talk about is their nutrition and essentially how to supplement them because they are extremely specialized amphibians, which means we need to take those extra steps to make sure that we're supplementing their prey items effectively while ensuring that they have a proper diet. So Chase, let's get us started. What's the most important sure. thing when it comes to our feeder insects? So the most important thing, of course, is having a steady supply of feeder insects. Uh, the first thing that you're going to be feeding the dart frogs, of course, is going to be uh, flightless fruit flies. Um, now there's lots of different strains of flightless fruit flies. These in particular are uh, some of our Heidi I believe these are the uh, Heidi I uh, black, actually. Um, we have a lot of different strains. Uh, these in particular are some of the largest of the flightless flies. Um, they're meant more for larger frogs, not necessarily for um, the small froglets. These are bean beetles, and these typically are a good um, auxiliary feeder for uh, adult dart frogs as well. So how often can we feed bean beetles versus the fruit flies for young dart frogs that are two or three months out of the water to an adult leucamella over here? So you really want to be feeding the flightless fruit flies every other day to the dart frogs, again, replenishing their hunting supply. Um, so far as the bean beetles, it's saying that I recommend as a uh, sparse feeder, saying that is just an auxiliary feeder every now and then. Um, something when you're low on fruit flies or something to supplement the fruit flies with. Really, no more than 10% of their diet should contain uh, bean beetles just because they're very high in cayenne, which can be hard for the frogs to digest, which is also why I recommend those for adults, not for froglets, because the bean beetles are a little bit hard to digest. But again, it's a great um, supplemental feeder. Um, so far as the fruit flies, um, there's a lot of different strains out there. We actually have about 20 different strains at Houston Frogs. Wow. So. And we culture the flies on fruit fly media. So this is Chase's fruit fly media, which I use in-house. It's, I'll honestly say, it's made me rethink my universal ingredient. So that's going to be changing real soon um, with Chase's help. And I'm just, you know, What's really important about your fruit fly media, guys, it's kind of like gut loading. So what I, what, what I want you to think about is we always promote you need to gut, gut load your dubia, gut load your crickets, because what's inside them is what is going into your critter. That logic stays same with your fruit flies. You need to have a nutritious fruit fly media that specializes in not only the health of the flies that you're culturing, but specializes in the health of the animals that it's being fed to. And that's where his fruit fly media comes in, which is at one point we'll have a how to utilize this fruit fly media video um, to help you guys out. The next important thing is how do we dust our, our, our fruit, flightless fruit flies and what type of supplement should we use and what should the supplement schedule be? Now, what's interesting about dart frogs is they are very, very specialized, like I keep saying. And we're going to explain that to you now. Mm -hmm. Chase, let's start off with our basic calcium, um, how we get calcium, what are ways that we can help them get the calcium they need via supplementation or your other means here. Yes, so in nature we know that um, supplementation essentially comes through their diet and it's also going to come from their environment itself. And what that means is that they're going to be eating a lot of different insects, a wide variety of insects that are gut load with a variety of plants that are indigenous to that area. Also, as they go through puddles of water, their skin is osmotic, it actually absorbs uh, minerals through it. That's why we can also use medications dermally on dart frogs, which is really nice. 
and they're also going to be hopping onto different mineral rich surfaces like clays, soils, things like yeah. that, feel absorbed through their skin. Now what we want to do is we want to try to sort of replicate that through the supplements that we give them in captivity. Since we're giving them a bland diet of fruit flies, which are great for protein and fats, we need to also supplement them with some of the most vital building blocks of their bodies like calcium, vitamin A, D3, things like that. So what we have here is we have uh, various vitamins, yep. um, well, vitamins, minerals, supplements, um, the vitamins being the organic component and the minerals being the inorganic component. Um, so let's talk about calcium. Sure. So the one that we, we have two different brands here for our mm -hmm. calcium. So first let's talk about the Rapashi versus the sure. Nectar really quick. So a Rapashi has been known in the U.S. for quite a while. Uh, it's an all-in-one calcium supplement. It has a proper amount of calcium, vitamin A, D3 for proper bone growth and neurological health for the frogs. Yep. Um, the other one that is most trusted in Europe is going to be the Nectin. So essentially, what we have here are the most trusted in the U.S. and the most trusted in Europe. Calcium. That's going to be the Nectin supplements. Yep. So I don't have these supplements yet, but Chase is close to becoming a distributor. And once he does, you'll find them on the biodude.com, just like on HoustonFrogs.com. Make sure you guys check them out. That's right. Okay, so we have our calcium, and, and we know that they're utilizing the D3 to help put that calcium into necessary areas. But there are other things that the, their calcium delivery system internally relies on, and that's vitamin A. Yes, absolutely. And that is one of the most important things that we have to supplement carefully um, because too much vitamin A can be deadly, too little will cause big time issues. So to do that, one of the things that we found on the market is the Apache Vitamin A Plus. Now, I like this one because it's safe. It isn't nearly as concentrated as the Necton brand. That is correct. So um, that isn't, mm -hmm. that's not a good thing nor a bad thing. It can help maybe potentially alle alleviate user error. So I personally supplement my adult breeding poison dart frogs with the vitamin A plus every two weeks. You can even get away with, with what's a month. So right. would, would you agree with that or do you think it should stay at two weeks? So it really depends upon the frogs. Of course, Ufagas are going to have a much higher vitamin A requirement than non-Ufagas. And then also uh, breeding adult pairs are going to have more of a vitamin A requirement than what non-breeding adults are going to have. Um, so it's very important that you give the vitamin A according to uh, the needs of your frogs. For instance, the uh, froglets, honestly, the um, Rapashi and Nectin products, specifically the Nectin Multi-Rep and Nectin. Which uh, I actually have in my hands, yep, which you guys will see D3, in a second. Yep. And then the Rapashi Calcium Plus and Rapashi Supervite, those provide the necessary vitamin A that you're going to need for your froglets. So you really don't need to add in that concentrated vitamin A until they're adults, until they are starting to breed and use that vitamin A that retinol for egg development. Yep. So then when we go to the to the, the vitamin A, so far we've covered calcium. Uh, this The calcium plus also has your multivitamin in it. So we know not everybody's gonna have Rapashi. Right. Let's say they have um, a another calcium with D3 in it with no multivitamin. So we might mm -hmm. still have to supplement with a multivitamin. Right. That's where the, the, the Nectum Globe multi-rep comes in, which is your all-in-one mm -hmm multivitamin so yes. what's important is you have a calcium and a multivitamin this is what we've covered so far so if we're if we're giving them the Rapashi calcium plus which has the calcium and the multivitamin in it chase mm -hmm. how many times a week would you recommend giving this so I would re recommend the Rapashi calcium plus twice a week twice a week and then to fill in with a multivitamin such as either the Nectin multi rep or the, the Supervite. Uh, Rapashi Supervite. okay and that's once a week Yes, that's so correct. So we have calcium twice a week. This is a seven day. So mm -hmm. in seven days, we're given calcium twice. We're given the multivitamin once. And once every two weeks in that additional feeding, we, we get vitamin A. You do not ever want to mix these together. So what we're getting at is you want to make sure you have a, a cup that's specifically for multivitamin, a cup that's specifically for calcium. It's just not good to mix the things. Yeah, together. well, the biggest thing about it is that um, some of these vitamins are fat soluble. 
and some of them are not. Uh, some things are very easy to overdose with. For instance, uh, vitamin A, you can get uh, hypervitaminosis, which is essentially vitamin A poisoning because they actually sequester that into their fat cells. Yep. Uh, meanwhile, other vitamins, it's very hard to be able to overdose with those. Like, for instance, vitamin C would be very hard to overdose with. Yep. Um, but so far as the vitamins, though, um, it's very important to do a rotation because just like they're going to be getting a different rotation of vitamins and minerals in the wild, it's good to keep that same naturalistic approach. And that way they're getting those fat soluble vitamins every now and then, and they're getting those other vitamins and minerals on the regular. Yep. So, and then we have another supplement that I personally like to use, especially when you're breeding them. And what this is, uh, this is not a product that I sell yet, but this is, uh, it's called astaxanthin. And what this is, this is just ground up red algae that is uh, farmed in Hawaii uh, that essentially we use as a natural color booster. It has a lot of other things. So this product will naturally enhance your reds, oranges, and yellows by providing sp that specific carotenoid, a very potent carotenoid, right into your animal for them to easily more synthesize and it also works in relation with the with the vitamin a absorption in the body isn't that right chase that's right and that uh, is also going to sometimes help with fertility issues with ufagas as well we found that uh, carotenoids in conjunction with vitamin a yep. with ufaga particularly egg eating frogs uh, where their tadpoles will be fed eggs from the mother um, those do benefit from the carotenoids even more so than the non ufaga do. Yep, and it's just interesting because it's kind of goes hand in hand with a lot of, not all, you have blue pomelio, you have green pomelio, but a lot of them have red and oranges in them. And I wonder if yep. that has something to do with the carotenoids that they need just to function. Yeah, and we've actually noticed that a lot of frogs that are red, they're brought to captivity, they're not fed carotenoids. If it's a red coloration, let's say, for instance, a Pomelio blue jeans, then you can actually see their color fade with time. And it'll fade from a bright red to more of like a light orangish color. Yep. But once you add carotenoids in their diet, then they're actually going to brine up to that bright red again in a matter of a few months. Yep. So I know there's a couple places that you're able to get it. Like I said, it's one of those products that I haven't sold yet just because it's super specific. So what I'm going to show you guys is how I like to dust my, my fruit flies here in house. I get a normal 32-ounce uh, cup right here. Okay, 32-ounce cup. Okay, and then I uh, get my fruit flies. I take it, I hit it down. I take, I bend over like this. And then I dump the flies into wherever I'm trying to go. Put in my supplement. I shake, I go like this, so we're covered. So, Chase, did I overboard it? Because this is normally how I like to do it. So think about how it is, carotenoids are one of those things that's very, very, very hard to overdose yep. on. Um, other things like vitamin A, you can, but typically the amount of dust that's going to be on the flies is not going to be enough. Exactly. Plus, those flies are constantly trying to get that vitamin so. powder off of them. So it's better to go a little bit heavier on them because by the time that last flies in, typically they have very little vitamin power on them. So I, I like to, you know, dust like this, guys, just so you guys know. You can go a little bit lighter to the point, like, so instead of the flies being, like, white, they're, like, they look like they've been dusted with a little bit of snow. That's another really good approach with it as well, depending on the amount that you want to feed. And I just put that in there. And then we're gonna see if she decides to uh, come on down and eat or if our other little one wants to reveal themselves. And of course, once your mister goes off, any residual calcium or multivitamin or you know carotenoid or vitamin A that you're using uh, will dissipate into the, you know, into the material in which you know, it's rested on. So whether it's wood, your leaf litter, mm -hmm. Whatever, and you can see the flies are making their way up in Miss Unit with a capital U. <laughs> she is making her way. She wants to. So yeah, guys, um, we thought this this video was important because you know it's 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 something that cannot be overlooked when you're keeping dart frogs as pets. So we're gonna cover it one more time. 
a calcium supplement with, with D3. That's very important. A calcium supplement mm -hmm. with D3 should be given twice a week for mm -hmm. froglets to adults. That's correct. Our multivitamin mm -hmm. should be given once a week, froglets mm -hmm. to adults. And the vitamin A plus, uh, sorry, a minimum of two weeks, every two weeks. And then the astaxanthin, I usually do about once a week. It's a pretty different, more, it's a different schedule than a lot of other animals, but again, it's very important that it's followed. Yeah, it's very important that when the flies are put in, they're going to carry some type of nutrition other than the fats and proteins. Yeah. So it's very important to put those vitamins and minerals on them that the frogs need to be able to sequester uh, calcium into their bones, for instance, so they don't have metabolic bone disease, um, or so they're able to grow their soft tissues, including their uh, their brains so that they don't have neurological issues. Yep. Um, and then we do have uh, auxiliary ways of supplementing them. Actually, when you do put the supplements into the tank, as you can see, there's some excess dust in there. It's actually not a harmful thing uh, because for one thing, the frogs, when they hop on that, they're actually absorbing some of that through their skin. Yep. And also the isopods are going to be taking advantage of that calcium for exoskeletal growth since they are crustaceans and not actual insects. And then also your plants are going to use uh, a lot of those vitamins and minerals for their own growth as well. It's almost sort of like a fertilizer for them. Um, and then of course we do have other ways to uh, supplement the frog's auxiliary, like for instance the clay bath that we have. And if you actually put a little dish in there with the clay bath, um, then the frogs will frolic through that and they'll actually be able to absorb the calcium, magnesium, iron, cobalt, all those very beneficial minerals through their skin, which then they can sequester that calcium through the uh, vitamins provided in their diet. Yep. Awesome, guys. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop us a line in the comments um, or to, you know, uh, email us at customercare@thebiodude.com. I'm sure you can reach out to Chase on, on his website. Mm -hmm. um, yep. You know, and again, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name is Josh Halter. I'm the owner and founder of The Biodude. You can visit my website. Like, click, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'm Chase with Houston Frogs. Dude abides! <laughs>